We've been in prisons really since prisons have begun, as far as this country is concerned. But in formal terms, there's a, a, a Prisons Act from the 1950s, which specifies that in order for a prison to exist, there needs to be a governor, a medical officer, and a Church of England chaplain. And that act actually is still in force. So um, the role of the chaplain within a prison is actually enshrined in legislation and is central to the prison's existence. But I do see myself as having a role as a kind of advocate for prison chaplains and an advocate for the place of uh, spiritual things within, within the life of prisons and in the criminal justice service more, more widely, so probation and things like that come within the brief as well. Uh, but part of it is about trying to articulate um, the church's voice uh, on criminal justice matters. So we're recording this on a uh, morning. This afternoon I will be in the House of Lords speaking in the debate on a criminal justice bill. And it's really important to do both so that one connects what's actually going on on the ground uh, with the policy level uh, within Parliament and so forth. Most of our chaplaincies now are part of teams where there are people of all different Christian denominations and uh, non-Christian faiths as well. And that's, that's absolutely right and proper. But the place of the Church of England in there is really important, partly because we're the church that in many ways can, has this capacity to provide a space where others gather. We can guard the space for the spirit and for, for religious practice. Uh, church of England chaplains aren't always the coordinating chaplain, but they often are. Um, and of course, as the Church of England, we're the church that has that particular relationship with the life of our nation, with issues to do with public life and our public institutions. And therefore, for us to be engaged in prisons work is really important, in the same way as it's important for us to be involved in the health service, in education and so forth, because these are part of the public life and well-being of our nation. I'm Geoffrey Byrne, I'm the Managing Chaplain at uh, Rochester Prison and the next door prison, Cook and Wood. Actually, it's quite hard for people to come to church or to come to classes. There are lots of other things that keep people's attention. And I think you have to be a person of courage to begin to engage with faith in a very, uh, an environment like prison, which can be sometimes quite hostile. We do have a people who hopefully are beginning to ask questions. Uh, they're in prison. Uh, it's a time hopefully to reflect on why they're here, what's gone on. Maybe there are different life choices you can make. And so chaplaincy is a part of that process of transformation for people. So I don't think it's easy, but it is a time where some people take the time to reflect or maybe something happens to them while they're in prison, which causes them to stop and think. In prisons, we're ahead of the game in some ways of what's happening in the rest of society. Because here, right at the sharp end, where people are living on top of each other, we have people of lots of different faiths and as a chaplaincy team we need to work together to uh, service those people and so as chaplains we're learning about each other's faiths, we're learning to work together and that can be quite challenging sometimes but it's also very, it's very fruitful, it's a very rewarding thing to do and to be modelling for the men here about how we live and work together and hopefully they can carry that out to the outside as well. I have to say for me personally, it's a spiritually enriching experience um, because I do discover God in prison. Now, to some extent that's, in, well, to a large extent, that's in the lives of people. Um, it's not so much in the services that we lead or anything like that, it's what you see in people in prison officers and other staff who are motivated by their faith to be doing what they're doing, in the chaplains who by their vocation are saying something about God, they wouldn't be here. It's, it's not an easy uh, calling to be a prison chaplain. They wouldn't be here if God wasn't calling them to be here. It's very clearly recognised, I think, that if we did not have chaplaincy, um, prisons would be far more difficult to manage. Uh, you would struggle to prove that statistically, I suspect, unless you actually removed chaplaincy and tried to see what happens. But I think people kind of just know that if it wasn't here, uh, what goes on in prisons would be impoverished.